Guys, what's up? This is hopefully the sixth episode of the Midnight Show Twenty Review. It has been a long, long time. Uh, let's see. Basically, I started a page on Facebook called The Daily Hollywood. On that, I record... Well, I basically bring forth information from sites like ComingZoom.net and... I bring stuff for like the Avengers and Ghost Rider. It's a lot of comic book stuff, but there is some stuff like Men in Black 3 and everything. Uh, I know I look like a hippie. I have not really gotten a haircut or shaved in a while. I look like Wolverine's fucking cousin in a way. Anyways, uh, I need to get rid of this, but for some reason last year my lip got like up here. It cracked open and now it's like a permanent scar, so I can't grow any hair right there. Uh, let's see, while I was gone, I I wanted to get a new laptop because, like, I remember telling you guys it was breaking. It finally broke. I got a computer that my dad bought me to hold me over, and I told him instead of a laptop, I wanted an iPod Touch. Now, let me say, how do I say this? Um, I was an anti-Apple person. I'm not anymore, but I still do enjoy Microsoft a little bit more because I was so used to it. I mean, I use Apple now. I got an, I got an iPod Touch, a uh, second generation. Uh, now that I was working in a haunted house, well, was. I was basically trying to save up money I have to buy an iPod 4G. Well, you know, the camera or whatever. Just because if I had that, I probably wouldn't need a computer. And if I did need a computer for iTunes or anything, like, you know, downloading onto my iPod or transferring files, you can always use my dad because my dad is the real computer geek. He knows a lot. He's a smart person. So if it wasn't for him, I really wouldn't be into Apple now, but anyways. Oh, I'm a little sick, obviously. Movies. Uh, there's a lot coming out, and there's a lot that have been terribly produced. Green Lantern. I thought it was a great movie. I thought it was awesome. It stuck to the comic. Well, if you're a comic book nerd, Barry Allen was not the first Flash. I mean, Green Lantern, sorry, wrong character. Barry Allen was not the first Green Lantern that was, I can't remember who the first guy was, but other than that, it was, it was straight on. A little, some things were a little different, but it all kind of added together. The only th problem with it was it looked really cheesy. Uh, it was, the acting was kind of terrible. The story wasn't told properly the way it should have been. And I think that the movie was a little bit rushed when it came to production value. <laughs> And the big problem is that that movie was, I don't know, I guess it was made more for the media and Hollywood itself instead of comic book fans. And so when that happens, a lot of those movies don't make good reviews. Like X-Men First Class did, I was surprised at that. That was a great movie, I had to buy it. It's If a movie's that good, I will buy it, so I went out and got it. But Green Lantern, as a lot of you would know, it underperformed. It did not make enough money, so... The plans to make a sequel or a trilogy have been thrown down the toilet. Uh, let's see, what else about it? Well, Ryan Reynolds playing the Green Lantern was pretty cool, but it seemed too much like a Van Wilder type of character. It did not seem a lot like Barry Allen. Uh, I mean, I guess I could say that that's all I really have to complain about that movie. In other words, I did like it. I just don't understand how a lot of people didn't. But then again, the reason nobody likes comic book movies is because comic book movies are like game movies like gaming like they're not meant for Hollywood Hollywood is looking for movies that are they don't have people flying around in suits eh? oh I think someone gave me a flu of some sort I don't know but anyways those kind of movies aren't meant for Hollywood like I guess Batman and X-Men and then Watchmen, I can name a few. They were pretty good when it came to Hollywood, but making a movie based off a comic book, it can't happen because comic books are for a certain amount of people. So like people like it and some don't. And that won't survive in Hollywood. It's really hard to get a movie that was based off a comic book to become like high to make a lot of money. So I think that Green Lantern kinda showed that it could be a great comic book movie, but it can also be a big failure to making money. And because of that, not only is it not having a, a franchise, 
uh, a lot of people aren't interested in comic book movies anymore. I heard a rumor that the Avengers, Marvel's The Avengers, is coming out. But the rumor is that it lost about 20 or 30 percent of its hype because of the Green Lantern. People said that comic book movies are a thing of the past. They're trying to bring it back because if you remember back in the day when they had Batman and Superman, it was great because they really didn't have that much characters. There wasn't much they could do. But now that it's all coming back to us, now that we have Thor and Iron Man and Cowboys and Aliens and we have all these comic book movies, a lot of them are just being given, like, they're given neg negative reviews because they're not really for that crowd. They're not for all the people, the audience. They're for the certain amount of geeks. And a lot of these movies sometimes don't even follow what the geeks are looking for, so even the geeks hate it. Comic books just aren't meant to be. And now that there's so many of them, Green Lantern was the first step to possibly ending all comic book movies. I mean, I don't really think The Avengers has a chance, nor do I with The Dark Knight Rises. I don't think that'll stand either. I mean, in my personal opinion, Christopher Nolan was a great director. He made a good movie, but everybody cares too much about Heath Ledger. They say that without Heath Ledger, that movie wouldn't have been great. I'm like, no, that's a lie. You you wouldn't have to have the Joker in it. It would still be a good movie because Christopher Nolan knows how to pull that off. Yeah, it does have something to do with the actors, but it's not... It's really not the character or the actor itself. I mean, because Heath Ledger died, it's just like, oh my god, his last movie ever, it's the Joker, let's go see it. That really isn't the case. You could have had... In all honesty, they could have had someone like Johnny Depp play the Joker. It still would have been a great movie. Even if Johnny Depp died or not, it still could have been a good movie. Or you could have picked someone that was an unknown. It still would have been a great movie because the director has talent. And like he knows how to write the stories. He knows what he's doing. You're good to go. But a lot of movies now for comic books are just being judged by the actors. Like, What's an example of a movie... Okay, Watchmen. That's a movie that was badly criticized. There's some horrible things about it. But the reason there weren't really any famous actors is because the director was trying to prove that you don't need famous actors to make a good movie. Especially when it comes to comic books, because those can barely stand even with a good actor. Proving my point. I hope I'm not losing you or going off topic. I'm just saying comic book movies are really challenging and everyone judges it just because of the actors and the directors that are on it but you don't need that it just depends on the certain crowd that likes it and because it's just a certain crowd not everyone else is gonna like it so what chance does it have I guess you could say Hollywood would look at it as like okay so if Green Lantern doesn't stand a chance what the hell chance does any other superhero have Green Lantern isn't he's well known but he isn't as big as Superman but if you don't have a chance, why bother with a Flash or any sort of movie? Why bother if he has no chance? I could say that it's... I'm not, I'm not blaming any director or actor. I thought the movie was great. The problem is it's because it is a comic movie and only a certain amount of people, a certain crowd, like it. It's not Star Wars. Star Wars is a geek thing, but you don't need to be a geek to like Star Wars. Everyone likes Star Wars. Green Lantern couldn't pull that off because it wasn't aimed towards the audience. It was aimed toward comic book fans while trying to be a childish movie because it was pretty corny just like Captain America but still it thought it was great. My only complaint for this summer was Thor. I thought Thor was terrible because it was too modern. I did not like that idea. The acting was... I don't know. I really don't know what to say about that. I guess I can give it like a three star acting. It was... Just, I don't know. I, didn't, I just don't like how it all came out. The screenplay, everything just bothered me. But I guess I can't complain too much about that. Uh, I did like Cowboys and Aliens, which I mentioned. I thought that was a great movie. The idea sounds stupid, but I read the comic book and I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. Even though I don't like Daniel Craig, it was still a good movie. Uh, John Favreau, I think he really made up for Iron Man 2 because a lot of people can agree Iron Man 2 was very ridiculous in every way. So... If I were to, let's see, one more thing about movies. I guess movies that I can tell people to watch. Uh, X-Men First Class, definitely watch that. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was epic and amazing. That was great. 
Uh, Transformers Dark of the Moon. I hated the first two. I mean, the first one was okay. I'll watch it again. The second one was stupid. And so I gave up hope on the third one. But then I saw the third one. I loved it. was impressed. And I hope that they do stick with their promise for making a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. But who knows what's going to happen there. Because Hollywood likes to put everything on hold. Um, now on to books. I read a couple new books over the summer. I read one that was... I'm not sure if it's published or not, because it's on a site for uh, authors that haven't had their shit like published. It's called Desperate Choices. I think it's by Janet. I'm not sure what her last name is, but it's a story about a woman that gets... She marries a cartel drug lord, and she basically... She gets abused by him, and there's a lot of things going on between them. He's a pervert, and he puts her through sexual situations that ruined her ruin her hopes for actual love and then she decides she's gonna escape and what she does she goes to like another I think it's another state she meets a banker that's supposed to help her with all the money she has which is over a million and the banker falls in love with her he can't let go of her and he basically fights no matter how annoyed she gets he fights for her and then they become like they get close and they get to these moments where they're about to make love or do anything they're naked with each other but then she stops him because of the idea of her abusive husband but towards the end they do end up you know fall in love and then that's when they realize they both have a past that they're running from and so both their past kind of catch up I can't tell you anymore but it was a good book I'm pretty sure you can go to it's free uh, ebooks.com and you can find it it's called Desperate Choices really good book I read a lot of other books too I can't remember most of them oh I read one called The Sicilian by Mario Puzo it's an old book it's a great book it's long, you have to have patience, so read that one. There's really not others I can name right now off the top of my head, but those are some books you should try. Music, uh, a little disappointed with music, especially because everyone's into that uh, song, Every Day I'm Shuffling. I can't get into that, I don't know why. I'm not really into the modern stuff. It's never really been my thing. I have no clue why, I just like don't like that kind of music. My music, as I've said before, is the old school music, so. Um, uh, if you do want any more access to movies or information, you can either check out my Facebook account on the Daily Hollywood. You're either at it or you're not, or you can request to be on it. I post new stuff usually every day, if not every week or every month. But I usually have something new on there. But if you want to find more without me doing it, go to comingsoon.net. And basically it has everything. It's a big database for all the geeks to go explore. You don't even—they have everything too, not just comic book movies. They got movies like they have information on movies like uh, the Shining remake and Pet Cemetery remake, Hollywood remake, and everything. But they got that. And I guess that's all I can say for right now. But I really don't have any plans to make episodes that are 30 minutes long like I used to. I really don't have a a plan to do a part one and a part two for one episode anymore just because I haven't really thought that clear in. I mean, if it comes to me, I'll, I'll do that, but for now, this episode, like the last, will only have one part, so 15 minutes of me rambling on about movies and why I was gone. Back now, feeling a little sick, though. Go to the 13th floor haunted house. Go to the asylum. Hopefully, you'll like it. Uh, if you need anything you want to know, anything you want me to mention you or talk about you, or maybe anything that you need to know, like say movies or books, just anything you want, write something in the comment box below, or contact me on Facebook, on my wall, instant message, anything, Twitter, you can contact me on YouTube, or if you have my cell phone number, go for it, but anyways, that's all I gotta say, so I'm glad you guys watched, I'm officially back now, I'm not gonna be doing episodes separately, I'm getting ready to do more and more because I'm a senior now and I'm about to go into the real world. So I just kind of want to enjoy my life while I can. So thanks for watching, guys. It means a lot to me. Hopefully you tune in for the next one. So thank you for your time.